and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna take you on a little sewing adventure where I crank out my last WCS costume with less than a week before I leave for Japan. Luckily, this costume is relatively simple. It's a bunch of rectangles, essentially. And I will be matching with Annie Cheese Yona. So I am going to be making Lily in one of her uh, outfits. I'm taking a little bit of creative liberty with the design. I'm turning it a little bit more historical as well, a little bit more uh, accurate for Hanfu because I don't want to have to deal with Velcro on zippers and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so this is going to be my first only manga cosplay because she doesn't appear in the anime. So this is exciting. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make the patterns, right? So, um, I bought this book on Amazon, uh, hand food pattern making uh, in the metric edition. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this book to help me draft my hanfu patterns. The way that Lily's costume works is that uh, she has basically a chest high skirt, but she also has another skirt peeking out from underneath it. So I'm going to have two skirts uh, for Lily. I'm going to do a chest high skirt and I'm going to do an underskirt. And then the top is going to be very similar to this one here. So yeah, I'm going to go through, read this. Uh, I think I'm going to pattern out the top and the underskirt first. I want to make sure that I have enough fabric uh, available. And then I will go ahead and pattern out the chest high skirt after that. So the first thing I had to do was take some measurements. I had to take my bust measurement, my waist measurement, uh, my neck circumference measurement, as well as my hip measurements. And I also needed the bicep and the length from the neck down to my waist, both in the front and in the back. Then it came time to drawing out my patterns. So I followed the instructions in the book, I set up my grid lines, and I started drawing the patterns from there. Had to remember you use those French curves to make those nice rounded shapes along the armhole as well as along the hemline. So I've drafted the top pattern. I, I still have to do the sleeve, uh, so I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, but I was reading through the book and I actually think that it would be better if I attach the skirt to the top so it's one piece. That way I don't have to worry about any extra layers around my waistline because let's be honest, I am going to be very, very warm in Japan wearing this costume. So if I can reduce the amount of tightness around the waist, make it a little bit looser, so I can eliminate that waistband of the skirt and I can just attach the skirt to the top, then that would be great. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and modify this pattern that I have here to just make it so that I can have that skirt waist part attached there. I made my modifications and made the sleeve pattern. Then it came time to cutting out the fabric and hopefully the pattern working. I didn't have a whole lot of time on my hands so I didn't bother making a mock-up. I just went ahead and cut from the main material uh, and I sewed everything together before trying it on and made sure to finish off my seams using some flat felt seams to make sure that there was no fraying edges on the inside because this was not going to be a lined garment. So I've gone ahead and done some box pleats on my skirt piece because uh, I want to make sure that uh, the skirt will fit with the top right here. It has been pinned together and they actually almost match up. Now, the top is a little bit longer, but that's okay because 
because I can trim the inside of the top. Since it is a wrap, this will wrap around the waist. The inside doesn't have to be as long. So I can always adjust the top to match the length of the skirt. So this is beautiful. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sew in these pleats. I'm gonna baste them in and, uh, and then I'm gonna tackle cutting out the new top. It's important to baste your pleats because if you don't baste the pleats in place, uh, when you go to try to sew it onto the actual waistband or the top, your pleats might come out and make it a little bit wider. So here is the top. Got the sleeves all hemmed. I do have to put the collar on still, um, but this is the top. Then it came time to sewing the collar onto the top, which was just, you know, a rectangular band that was interfaced and just sewed all along that neckline. The first layer is almost done. I just need to hem the bottom and I need to add the ties at the waist here. I've come to the realization that I'm going to die of the heat in this. I think it is linen, so, and it is mostly white so that I can reflect heat, right? But it's very heavy. <laughs> this would probably be much more, this would probably be much more um, appropriate for like a Japanese winter, not a Japanese summer, but we'll see. Finally, it came time to hemming the whole garment. I just did a simple rollover hem uh, to finish it up. And this was super easy because it was a rectangle and no circles were involved at all. The final detail, I hand sewed the ribbons so that I could tie it together. Like I said, I was trying to avoid the use of Velcro and zippers. So we used ribbon to attach everything together. It was time to measure out the overskirt. So I just cut out rectangles from my brocade, as well as the pattern pieces for the actual chest piece as well. All right, so I've just ironed all of my pieces. I've applied the interfacing along the uh, waistband of this chest skirt. I have my skirt pieces over there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and sew these together. Uh, I have to figure out how I'm going to pleat that because the math was weird and I just ended up cutting three panels instead of like two and a bit. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. I might have to do a lot of pleating. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Let's go. Working with this fabric was a pain. As you can see, it frays a lot. I probably should have finished all of the edges before working with it, but I didn't have my serger at the time, so I just worked with what I had. Then it came time to figuring out the pleats for the overskirt. Now I had to like be a little bit finagly with these because I didn't have as much fabric as I was hoping for, but I eventually came to a solid method when it came to it. I sewed the pleats to the actual, you know, bodice pieces, and then I slip stitched to the lining to cover up all of the raw edges. And then the final step was to hem it. And once again, because it was a rectangular skirt, hemming it was super easy. Just simply flip and roll over that edge. Alright, so here is the top skirt. I had my doubts about this, um, especially since it is a pullover, like it goes over the head and there's no tying or anything, so it's not really adjustable. So when I first made the pattern, I didn't realize that. Uh, so I had to actually like take out the seams a little bit. So the seams are a little bit smaller than what I normally do, just to give myself a little bit of ease to you know be comfortable right because this is gonna go over top of something else that's relatively thick um but yeah this is really nice i am going to be very warm uh but yeah 
and then it came for some detail work. So I made a little hair piece where I just threaded a bunch of round little gold beads uh, onto a hair comb and tied it off with a little dangly gold rectangle thing. The last step to finish it off was to just glue a couple of little pink flowers to the hair comb. For the hair ties, I just cut out some rectangles from some scrap uh, brocade that I had lying around, sewed them together, and I intended to attach them to the hair by putting in a hair elastic, safety pinning the inside to the hair elastic, and then just wrapping it around the hair and tying it up with a really pretty cord that I had. For the wig, I had to section off a part of the front of the wig to put up into that half up do. So I had to portion off a uh, front piece both in the uh, on both sides of the wig and make sure that they were nicely combed to the sides. I then pulled another section towards the front from underneath that this is where I t attached the uh, hair tie thing, the, the sleeve, I guess. And I would wrap it around and tie it in place with the cord. And that's what a sample would look like. Then it came time to styling the bangs. So I started off by doing some trimming I feathered some of the bangs a little bit and then of course I went straight into teasing those bangs to give it some nice texture and volume because she does have voluminous bangs. Smoothed it all out once I was finished and then used some heat to get it to fall into the proper shape that I wanted it to. And of course, topped it off with some good old got to be hairspray. And that was it. We debuted these costumes at the Osu Parade in Japan. And I was so warm in this costume, but it was so worth it. Uh, this costume was really, really comfy, and I really can't wait to wear her to more events. In the meantime, enjoy some of this Osu Parade footage, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now!